Hi, Story Wilson with rswsolutions.com. Today, I had an interesting opportunity. We have some leftover parts from an independent Land Rover mechanic, it was JC's British and 4x4, that did the timing chain guides on a 2012 to 2010 Range Rover. And this also applies to the Range Rover Sport and LR4. So, we have to use our imagination for this, but this are some of the internal parts of the timing chain system in the front of the Ford 5 liter engine. So if we use our imagination here a little bit, we have, we're going to have a crank pulley down here. It's going to have some teeth on it inside the timing chain cover. And then we're going to have some chains going up, up to the valve train. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a couple of cams on either side of the engine. The chains, I believe, are gonna be doing some kind of dance. They're gonna be going through through pathways up in here. And I think there's another guide somewhere in there. But basically, the chains will ride on these guides, and as the engine rotates. These guides are pivoting and they're being pushed into the chains to hold tension. And they're being pushed with these tensioners. These tensioners um, are driven by oil pressure and um, they push the guides into timing chains. Now, this is a really interesting look into the failure inside the Ford 5 liter engine. We have a steel surface on the timing chain tensioner against an aluminum surface on the timing chain guides. And what happens is over time this tensioner in its in its effort in its job which is pushing against let's go ahead and take this out it's pushing against this guide constantly pushing and over time what's happened is it's actually worn itself into the timing chain guide surface. Now I was told this, this surface is flush, it's flat when new, and so all of this wear right here has been accumulated just with 50,000, 80,000 miles of this timing chain tensioner pushing and riding on this surface. So this is what causes the problem. This interface that wears um, what's happened, what we believe has happened, is this extra two millimeters or so of, of wear uh, is uh, pushed this system beyond its tolerance. So, and uh, so what's happening is we think the noise, the rattle and the ticking, clicking noise is the tensioner piston hitting the timing chain guide. You can imagine as there's momentum in this chain, rotating around at idle, you know, 800 RPM, that there's going to be some bounce in the guide. And we think that's happening is that it's leaving contact with the piston and coming back and, and slapping it. But this wear is what happens with the stock timing chain guides. It happened on both guides. And the new guides, I, I didn't see a new guide, but I was told that the new guides have a uh, like this area is machined out and there is an insert with like a bearing a steel bearing that provides a more adequate surface and they also said that this tensioner is angled a little bit more to accommodate maybe the thrust angle is off a little bit but really quite an extensive wear pattern steel versus aluminum so this is what's going on inside the Ford 5 liter engine on the timing chain guides and why they need to be replaced at around 50,000 miles. So the symptoms again, you have a rattle, a click, or a ticking noise from the front of the engine on the Ford 5 liters. And it's typically on cold startup and on idle, you'll get the noise. Now on some vehicles, in this vehicle in particular, which I find even more interesting, this vehicle, the Land Rover technicians, uh, the, uh, the technicians at JC's British and 4x4 said that the noise was not always apparent. It, the vehicle came in hot, wouldn't make the noise. That's understandable. 
vehicle cold on cold startup, you'd, you'd hear the noise, and sometimes you wouldn't. Sometimes you even hear the noise on a drive cycle when out driving and sitting at like a stoplight or stop sign. So very peculiar. I don't quite understand at this point how this kind of wear pattern would, would create a circumstance where the rattle would present itself for a period of time and then later in the drive cycle would disappear and then come back again and disappear and come back again. I'm not sure I understand, you know, I understand this is a problem. I just don't understand how it could be that this uh, damage here, this interface, would cause an intermittent problem, a problem that would not always be present and sometimes it would be much worse than others. So if you have any ideas on that, please leave something in the comments. I'm curious as to why the problem wouldn't just be constantly there or constantly not, more of a binary problem, just always on or always off. But uh, let me know in the comments. Anyway, we're going to delve further into this uh, problem. Mine will require a repair soon. Um, further discussion with JC's British and 4x4, there's absolutely no way I can do this job myself in my own garage. I'd be extraordinarily surprised if I can pull it off. Just for starters, he, he showed me about, about, about $2,000 worth of specialized tools that they use to perform this one job. And we're talking there was, there was a force multiplier ratcheting tool to take off the engine flywheel. The engine flywheel is like 200 newton meters of force and then 270 degrees of rotation after that to tighten it. I mean, it's just an amazing amount of torque on that bolt. And, uh, yeah, there's a flywheel pullers, injector, injector pullers, some belt tensioners, all sorts of special tools to do the job, cam block centering devices, I mean, just a handful of really special tools, not, not to mention all the special knowledge it takes to perform this job without having the timing chain skip a tooth, which would be a disaster. So stay tuned, hopefully there'll be a part three, and visit my website. Thanks for watching.